This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. All right. Hey, welcome. And you're listening to Daily Market Wisdom with Master Trader Nick Santiago. Today is April 29th, and this is show number 24. Well, we've already exceeded all the uh, odds. We're still doing this uh, four weeks later, Nick. But, uh, hey, we got gloomy news on the GDP front. What a shock, huh? What a shock. Um, we talked a little bit about it yesterday. I said, don't expect any good numbers. But that is already baked into the cake. The market was expecting it. It was actually even a little bit worse than expected. But again, um, you know, that's in the past. That's a rear view mirror stuff. You got to be always looking forward in the stock market and you got to let the markets tell you what to do. And really, that's why I use charts, because if, if, if somebody's at home and they see that GDP number, um, what are they doing right now? They want to jump out of a window. So, uh, again, and you look at the stock market today and you have the Dow up 450 points. So, uh, you know, you got to look at the charts. You got to pay attention to the technicals. You got to do what the charts tell you to do. And, um, again, that's that's what I've been doing. Yeah, so up 450 points. And then we see also oil is surging today. Yeah, you got a great pop today in oil. And, again, um, like we were on, you know, just a couple of days ago when the U.S. Uh, – when, when oil was falling, I said, you know, USO is rolled out of the June contract. They're going into forward contracts. And, um, you know, this is going to – probably causing a little bit of a hiccup in oil. But, ultimately, if you get the economy starting to go and, and you get these states starting to open up, you know, we have no choice but to use oil. We're going we're gonna to start burning through those reserves. Now, we have plenty of them. There's plenty of boats out there full with oil that are just sitting there uh, anchored. Um, but you start to get this economy going again, and people start moving around, start driving, start traveling. Florida is about to open up here. Um, I know Georgia has already opened up. Things will start slow, but the market looks forward. It's not looking backward in the rearview mirror and the market saying, hey, oil needs to move up. We're going to get things rolling here. And you also have you know, European countries starting to open up as well. Yeah, European countries opening up. So what happened here to USO? It looks like it's trading at 1767. Yeah, they right? did a reverse split, oh, they did a um, reverse split to make it look more attractive, but it, it really doesn't affect the value of the of the yeah. product itself. So it's just a reverse split. They, I think um yeah, 10 they might have done it. Yeah, uh, 10 for 10 to 10 for 1 or something along or those one, lines. I'm not exactly sure what, what the uh the math behind it was. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because they didn't adjust the charts yet on Yahoo, so it looked a little anomalous. I think it was, I think it was eight for one. I think it was eight, eight for, for one. one. Okay, yeah, it was a two something. That's right. All right, so hey, we had positive drug news from Gilead on uh, on the uh, drug they're testing for COVID nineteen. Yeah, it looks like they had really positive news. This stock has been like a seesaw lately because um, a couple of days ago, in fact, um, last week, there was a leaked uh, WHO report, WHO, the World Health Organization, leaked something out of China saying that you know the drug had no effect. And uh, later on, Gilead disputed it and said, hey, we got our test coming out at the end of the month. Um, you, the, the study out of China was not a complete study. And uh, the stock tanked on the news. In fact, the stock market tanked that day on the news. And again, it was an incomplete study. They didn't even have enough candidates to, to, to do the study. Um, so it just goes to show you the funny business that goes on with the World Health Organization and all these, you know, so-called places that are supposed to be helping us. And here Gilead comes out with terrific news. And we had new, great news on this drug a while back. But it looks like this, is, this could be, you know, helpful going forward. I don't want to say it's a game changer. But it might be, you know, we don't know. We've got lots of different uh, compounds coming out or being released soon uh, to help with uh, treatment of COVID-19. Not necessarily is it a, a cure, but I, I'll be honest, I don't want a vaccine anyway. So no, um, I, I like the theory that, you know, you could take a couple tablets and uh, relieve the, uh, the symptoms. Absolutely. Better to have, well, there's so much anti-vaccine sentiment out there in the public, rightfully so. We've seen, well... Look, uh, polio vaccine given in the 50s, 
a lot of it found mm-hmm. to cause cancer in women. And, and that's just one example. We know there's a lot of issues there. I'm not disparaging vaccines. I mean, look, uh, getting rid of measles, German measles, and all these other things, but giving somebody 35 vaccinations, a kid, 35 vaccinations at once... It uh, doesn't seem to be like the right way to go about it. Maybe they should be spread out more. I don't have the answers. I'm not saying that they cause more harm than they uh, they solve, but uh, I think uh, maybe they've done things to raise the risks. So earning, earnings uh, earnings pouring in. Uh, we got Google. What's uh, Google was uh, better than expected. Well, you know, they came out and um, the ad revenue is down. I don't even really pay much attention to that stuff, but I'll say this much. The stock's up $108 today. It's up 9%. So it's a tremendous pop for Google. Um, whether you love the company, hate the company, we're traders here, right? So uh, when we, we want to look at a stock, we have to say, hey, that, that stock's reacting pretty well to the market. So the reaction is really everything. Nobody's going to report great earnings this quarter in general, um, just because of, of the COVID-19 scenario. But um, you have to watch the reactions in the markets. I personally don't like to trade in front of the earnings. I like to trade afterwards, especially if the stock is down and I know the overall underlying trend is up, then I would be a buyer. Um, tonight, we have Facebook reporting earnings. We have Microsoft and Qualcomm. So that's another big night for technology. Um, so again, we'll see what this market does tomorrow. But um, today, market's looking pretty strong overall. Interesting. And just when you think it can't go any higher, it does it. So uh, what else are we looking at here? What about our metals trades here? They've uh, kind of fallen. Looks like we're in a real consolidation phase here, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's exactly what you want to see. I mean, if you take a look at, you know, spot gold today, we have spot gold down $7. If you take a look at the GLD, that's down 67 cents. You take a look at uh, GDX, which is gold miners, uh, that's down 27 cents. But really, you don't want to see these things go parabolic to the moon because that would be the end of the run. You want to see them make moves up, test levels, consolidate, pull back. That's healthy. That's good for the metals. That's good for the precious metals. And in fact, today we even have um, silver up a little bit by about 1.1%, up 17 cents on spot to 15 and a half. I own the SLV, as you guys know, and um, so far, you know, that that's working out nicely. Also on the program, you know, just uh, when I got into my X, uh, I think it was on the 15th, I got into XLF. I mean, we're up, you know, over 7% on that position now. So um, <clears throat> it's been a, you know, it's been a really, really good trading market. But going back to the precious metals, they're holding up really, really well. We don't want to see them go up right now. They should consolidate. That's healthy, and that will give you higher price down the road. Yeah, and we're seeing a little divergence between gold and silver. What does that tell, from a technical standpoint, tell traders? Well, remember what I was saying when I got into the SLV trade? um, I said, you know, silver has a lot of industrial uses, and if the economy gets going again— you know, we're going to need to use silver again, not just as a precious metal, but it's going to have uses in a lot of different areas. So um, that's what it's telling me, telling me things are starting to pick up. We're starting to get going again. And that's a really, really good sign. It's very, very uh, encouraging to see. Yeah. And so uh, what about our airline and hotel stocks? Uh, The buy signal hasn't flashed yet. Yeah, well, the buy signal's there. The problem is with the – they all have earnings coming up. So, right. you know, I, I kind of just like to wait until the earnings are, are done. But all the hotels are up today. You have Hilton up 5%. Uh, Choice Hotels is up 4%. Hilt, uh, Hyatt is up 6%. I mean, so they're all doing really, really well. But they have earnings this week. So And, and, early, and uh, more earnings coming out in early May on a few other hotel names. But – I'm compiling my list, and I'm just waiting for those earnings to pass, and I will be getting involved in those names. Interesting. So so <clears throat> earnings, like you say, stay away when the earnings reports come out because it's unpredictable. And when they're taking write-offs, they'll like take everything but the kitchen sink and totally decimate the stock because they want to take the hit because they know they've written off everything possible. And then uh, in later quarters when it comes back, it'll come back that much stronger because they got everything off the books. That's exactly right. Yeah. So uh, talking to a friend of mine in real estate, he was telling me, interestingly enough, that 
in the Northeast, residential real estate really hasn't been that effective. He said his default rate, and he owns many units, is uh, less than 10%, which is way higher than normal, but it's not end-of-the-world type numbers. But hotels and commercial real estate retail has really taken the hit, and there's just going to be tons of foreclosures there because in those cases, there's no moratorium on foreclosing on hotels and on commercial real estate. So anything in the REITs that's telling us uh, something that the that the market isn't? Well, we talked a little bit about it last week, and I talked about the iShares U.S. Real Estate ETF, which is the IYR, and that really holds a lot of these mall owners and, and, and big uh, buildings and, and, and uh, companies like that. And that's really what I track. And, and I still have that going higher. So I, I don't really see um, anything terrible there. Now, it, it's not going to scream to you know levels. But the IYR is trading around $76.85 at the moment. I see it going back up to 85 So um, I do think there's more upside to go um, for commercial real estate. Now, you know, when you talk about REITs, there's so many different REITs, right? So there's, there's you know, apartment rental REITs, there's uh, commercial real estate REITs, there's uh, nursing home REITs. I mean, it's so diverse. So you've really got to dig into those charts to really, you know, and, and be specific because it's such a diverse group when you, when you think about the uh, real estate investment trusts. Yeah. So... But just as an aside, so what you were saying about, uh, you know, bankruptcy, when you start seeing bankruptcies in industries, that's an indicator, often a buy signal. And we're going to start <clears throat> to see foreclosures in hotels. So it could be the same thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I've, I've shared the story with you before. In 2008, I was very, very bearish, but we had fallen pretty sharply from October 2007 on the S&P 500 to uh, March of uh, 2008. And I'll never forget, I had like a, a cycle turn and I said, well, this is it. The market should turn, you know, this week. And that night, it was a Sunday night, I'll never forget it, Bear Stearns collapsed and was uh, bought by J.P. Morgan for $2 a share. And I, I told my trading group that that night, I said, well, we're going to go in tomorrow morning and we're going to buy the S&P 500. And uh, they looked at me like I was crazy. And it was one of the greatest trades I ever took. Um, the S&P bottomed at 1276 that morning, hit a low, and we got in right at that level and uh, went up over to 1440 before peaking out and making the next bare leg. So, yeah, when you see bankruptcies, um, that's, that's always a sign. And that happened recently with, with crude oil. Um, you know, we just had some bankruptcies. We had some people file, and uh, Diamond Offshore was one company. Whiting Petroleum was another company. And usually, when you see those bankruptcies, that's that's a time when you got to step in. It's hard to do. It's not easy to do. This is not an easy business. Um, it, it's a business that's trying. It's always testing your nerves, especially. But like I always say, the hard trade is usually the best trade. And um, I don't know why that is, but uh, that that seems to be the the money makers. Yeah, and we should mention that. Uh the USO oil funds up five six percent today, which is a pretty significant rise when you consider how bad oil's been. But yeah, it's uh, where uh, the like you say the uh, best trades are the hardest trades because they really require going against the grain and going against the sentiment and uh, and hoping that you're right. Well, that's that's why the stock market's going up right now because nobody's nobody believes this, right? You have people walking around with masks right now. I actually saw a person, and this is God honest truth, um, walking around with an air tank, you know, <laughs> like a scuba tank. Really? I, I just couldn't believe what I saw. I tried to get my <laughs> camera out on my phone, and then the guy drove off. But um, I I don't even I you know I'm a former scuba diver. I mean, those tanks got away, you know. 50 pounds, 60 pounds on your back. That's heavy stuff. So, I mean, you know, they got people in a frenzy. And when I see that, I, you know, I'm always, I'm always going contra to what everybody else is doing. I want to just do the actual opposite. If everybody's on one side of the boat, you got to lean on the other side. And that's, that's really the bottom line. Yeah, that's so true. And it's like that in any market, real estate, um, all sorts of different things. You really got to look and see what the other side of the trade is because that's probably going to be the right one. And are there any other sectors that we should be taking a look at now, Nick? 
Well, the one sector that I don't want really a whole lot of involvement in right now is technology because it's run up too fast. So, um, you know, today we have Google up, obviously, but yesterday you could see tech stocks got hit a bit. And what, what I would avoid right now is the tech stocks that have had big runs with coronavirus. So all of those video conferencing stocks, anything um, in, in that group, I would, I would kind of avoid right now. Uh, the Teladocs, TDOC, was, you know, a great runner. It's a very strong name, but I would avoid that at all costs right now. I would not get involved in that. So I think everything else, all the areas that have been hit are, are potential buying areas. All the areas that have had runs with the COVID-19 scare, I would avoid them at the moment. So, um, <clears throat> again, um, I go through this every night in my nightly reports, and I, I try to break it down for all the members of what I'm looking at, what we're going to get involved in. And, um, you know, again, uh, technology stocks, I think you got to pick them selectively. You can't just go into, you know, these tech names that have run up. And I'll give you a great example of that was Netflix. You know, Netflix ran up into its earnings announcement. It was every, you know, all you heard was everybody's going to stay home and watch binge watch TV. Well, I don't even watch television. So for me, that's not true. But for maybe part of America, it is. But the stock ran up to four hundred and forty nine dollars um, on the 16th. Now it's trading at, you know, four ten. And actually, this morning was even below four hundred. So, you know, just understand those things that have had big runs. You know, now you, you want to see them uh, pull back and, you know, you'll be able to get back in them in due time. But right now I would stay away from that. Other areas, some energy stocks, believe it or not, for the first time, look really, really good on the chart. So, you know, I, I own BP calls. I, I love that. I think the pattern looks sensational there. Exxon is moving up. Uh, Chevron is moving up. Conoco. So, I mean, these stocks got a little bit more upside to go. Um, so there's select energy plays out there. There's select um, uh, retail stocks out there. Best Buy is having a really good day today. So, again, now that one's a little bit too high on the chart for me. But, you know, uh, you just let these things give you the pattern, and then you get involved in them. Don't, don't chase stocks, though, that are going parabolic. All right, yeah, that uh, don't chase a don't chase a falling knife, as it were, and um, yeah. So the uh, BP calls, uh, how far are you out on them? Um, right now, um, I'm a little bit out of the money, but you know the pattern on the chart. I have I have the option all the way out till October, but the the pattern on the chart is really really nice and. Again, th those are the kind of patterns I like when you just see um, the stock is well off the lows, never went down with the crude market, and it's just basing at 25 bucks. That's what you want to see. This thing should get to $30. So basing it at 25 and you think it'll hit 30 Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, well, we'll call it a day at that. Anyway, you want to go over to inthemoneystocks.com, take a look at Nick's record, take a look at the information there, and see if it's for you. You can also follow Nick on Twitter at ITMS. That's ITMS. And uh, write us. Let us know what you think. KL at KerryLutz.com. That's the proper email address. And Nick, we will uh, catch up with you tomorrow and see what's happening. Yeah, and Kerry, before we leave, um, they could also follow me at uh, NickSantiago01 at Twitter. That's my personal Twitter feed. Oh, and uh, okay. they'll get all my uh, personal comments right there as well. Excellent. All right, Nick, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you. This, this is, is your, your dose, dose of daily, daily market, market wisdom, wisdom with master, master trader, trader Nick, Nick Santiago. Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com.